Uncle Jamal, no heckling. Uncle Jamal, no heckling. Yeah. Yeah. I feel tired. It's okay. Action! Hello, uh, welcome. I just wanted to have a quick chat again about Christian persecution. So I'd like to draw to the family's attention the fact that China has one of the highest rates of Christian persecution. Uh, churches are routinely shut down. Images of Christ is as bad as it ever was under Chairman Mao at the moment. I'd also like to draw your attention, I'm going to do quite a generic video this week, to France, where countless, actually, uh, churches have mysteriously burned down. Um, and I would say that, being the cynic that I am, it's not a coincidence. There don't appear to have been any mosques or synagogues accidentally razed to the ground. Um, I'm sure you all remember Notre Dame, which is, even if you're not of this faith or that particular denomination, it's an iconic landmark and it's always a shame to see an historic building uh, destroyed or, or maimed, as it were. Uh, also, North Korea is again number one, uh, the, the number one place for Christian persecution on the planet for the 18th year in a row. Uh, Sudan is up there in the top. Pakistan, I'd like to focus for a second on Pakistan, that's number 12 in the top 50 uh, countries that are worst for Christian persecution. At the moment there are two, as I mentioned in the last video, there are two people in prison for defamation of the prophet, which is not blasphemy um, in any standard theistic definition of blasphemy because of the uh, element of shirk, which means nothing can be worshipped alongside Allah. But they are illiterate. One of them I believe has learning difficulties and they are being prosecuted. They have been in prison for at least five years now awaiting um, their penalty or serving their penalty for a written defamation of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, and both of them, as I said, are illiterate. And the uh, defamation is in English, neither of them speak English. One, I think one of them is in Asia Bibi's old cell, which is outrageous in and of itself. Her brother-in-law was recently murdered. Her legal team were threatened. Um, her crime, as it were, for which she was exonerated, was uh, again slander of the prophet. And I don't know if anybody remembers, not that you were alive, of course, the witch trials of England and uh, Scotland also, uh, whereby an accusation of witchcraft was enough to... So the standard procedure that Matthew Hopkins, the witch finder general, uh, carried out, and so did his, did his minions and other civil servants, was to dunk a woman into water. If she drowned, she was deemed innocent, but unfortunately dead. And if she was, if she floated to the top, as it were, after they dried her out, she was found guilty, and they would then burn her at the stake. And I would suggest to you that the um, allegations and immediate imprisonment, if not death, um, due to accusations of the slander of Mohammed, are in that ilk. They are basically, there needs to be no evidence because it's all verbal. Of course, in a Muslim country that is dominated by Sharia, uh, women need to be um, doubly represented because of the deficiency in intellect and the uh, Quran verses about having two women and one man if you cannot produce two male witnesses, unless it's rape where you need four. So in that respect, I would say that these baseless accusations against Christians, I've recently interviewed a Pakistani Christian man who has um, like talked to me, basically his family were not always Muslim, he has um, ancestry within other faiths as well and until the re-emergence or the, the uh, doubling down on the blasphemy laws, which are of course pretty much ancient, um, they all live together in harmony but at the moment Christians are denied jobs which is a form of jizya because if you can't earn money to keep yourself you will of course be subjugated uh, to the rest of the population who are able to earn an honest living. So where am I? North Korea, Pakistan, uh, Nigeria again. Um, Pakistan is number four, sorry, in the list. Nigeria is number 12. Um, it's absolutely, when I say horrific, I don't think you quite appreciate the images that I've seen. Um, I don't know if they're available on uh, like general search engines, but if you put into Google Nigerian pastor killed, I think you receive something like 10,800,000 search results and pretty much all of them are, uh, they're not replications of other search results. There may be four or five that are the same guy, but basically they're all uh, valid search results. So last month in Nigeria, a minimum of 200 people were slaughtered. And when I say people, I do mean Christians. I mean, they were slaughtered for not for resisting arrest. They were no criminals. They weren't um, evading the law in any way. They weren't 
you know, attempting to be arrested. They were innocent people, they were law-abiding citizens, and their only crime was to confess Jesus Christ as Lord as he is and as is the truth. And as such, I would like to pray, and I would like you all to pray for their families. 69 uh, Nigerian Christians were macheted to death in one attack. The mainstream is strangely silent on the Black Lives Matter front when it comes to black Nigerian Christians whose lives absolutely matter. Um, but obviously God is glorious in all of this and Romans 8.28 tells us that all things work to the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Apart from those 69, a 22-year-old uh, biology student named Vera was raped and battered in a church and was found conscious um, in a pool of blood. She was able to give her testimony or her, sorry, her statement to the police. She was hit on the head with a fire extinguisher after being uh, gang raped and beaten and she sadly died um, later on during that week. Two Nigerian pastors were killed last month, one of them with his pregnant wife. Uh, they left eight children orphaned. Uh, other than that, um, there are countless images of mass graves of Nigerians. Nobody seems to care. And especially now that the mainstream agenda seems to be Black Lives Matter, why don't Nigerian Christian Black Lives Matter? And I would suggest that even it is either to do with the fact that Islam is involved because Boko Haram or ISWAP, which is an offshoot of Boko Haram, are heavily, they also, 60% of their murder victims are Muslims. I'm not saying that they are solely out to persecute Christians, but as I've said before, I don't care who's persecuting my church. I just care that they are being macheted. They are being set on fire. They are being raped in front of their own children. Their children are then having machetes hanging out of their heads. And I, one day I will show that photo to the camera and I'll apologize in advance because there's a three-year-old child with a knife hanging out of her skull. And God forbid that is ever your daughter, your sister, your niece, your cousin, your neighbor, just someone in the world whose life is inconsequential to ours in the West, but is an actual valid human being who God loved enough to die for. If that little girl had been the only child on this planet, God, in the form of Jesus Christ would have still died only for her. And as a Christian, I am hurting over the fact that I understand the world is in the control of Satan. That's in the Bible, that's no new thing. But the fact that we we care about whether a celebrity has got a certain hairstyle, whether they've got <laughs> breast implants, whether they uh, are a man or a woman this week, whether they're gender fluid, whether I don't care. Celebrities, if you're watching, I don't care. <laughs> if you want to adopt multi-racial, multi-rainbow coloured children, start with Nigeria. In fact, don't adopt them out of Nigeria. Invest some money into these churches, because like I say, churches in China, churches in France, churches in Africa are being destroyed under our very noses. And unfortunately, Christians in the West, cultural Christians and committed Christians alike, are unaware and it's not the fault of you personally it's the fault of your government your media your teachers your educators to cover this up and it's one of the biggest cover-ups i've ever known about because the british government itself who is not always honest has admitted that the christian persecution is of genocidal levels i don't know if you call that genocidal levels Ooh. so we're talking about the holocaust we're talking about other mass instances of horrific murder and they're being carried out under our noses and not only in Islamic countries, in atheistic countries, in countries where Sikhs have got a problem with Christians. Like I say, I don't care whether it's atheists, whether it's communists, whether it's socialists, whether it's other Christians, because there is an issue with Christians killing other Christians. What I would plead with you to do is to make this fact um, as dear to your heart as it is to mine, as it is to Jesus, it is to the Lord. The Lord cares and the Lord will console those martyrs and saints who have been killed in his name. Like I say, if you're out committing a crime and you're a Christian and you happen to be like accidentally killed by the police or intentionally killed by the police, that's kind of your issue. If you're innocent of crimes, obviously not of sin, if you've been forgiven your sins, if the fact of confessing Christ is your only crime or deemed to be a crime, if you are held hostage and you make a video, as one Nigerian pastor did, pleading for the forgiveness of his captors, for their salvation, um, he's an absolute inspiration. He was still murdered. I mean, you know, like you can't win them all. But basically he will, um, he will have been instrumental in somebody's salvation. Throughout his uh, ministry as a, as a pastor, he will have helped countless people because all you have to do is save one soul or 
give them to Christ for the Holy Spirit to be able to work on their heart to save them and you will then even if you never speak a word about it your actions will please God influence others so pray specifically for China for North Korea for France for uh, the Sudan for Somalia for Iran for like there's just countless there's literally 50 of the top uh, top 50 open doors is an organization that you can go to they publish this list every year the uh, number of Christians killed in those 50 were over 4,000 in one year alone um, and as I say it's for nothing other than confessing Jesus Christ as Lord which we all know he is so I don't want to like bring you all down and I don't because you have to cast your anxieties onto the Lord God has a plan that is far superior to anything we can possibly imagine. Um, the time will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess without persecution that Jesus Christ is Lord. But at this time, whilst there's all the, you know, a pandemic going on, there's Machiavellian goings on within um, the main, you know, within the, I mean, I could go into some conspiracies, but I won't do that because I know that Jesus Christ is the truth and the truth will out and the truth will set you free if you will just look into it. If you, if you have a, you know, if you're an atheist, if you're agnostic even, look into moral excellence. Look into the word good and then see how I am justified in calling Christ good. And yet the Bible says that there are none good. No, not one. Which precludes him from being of the many. He is not just a human being. He is God in the flesh. And I thank God for that because he alone is perfect enough to die for my sins and for yours. And I'm going to stop bunnying. But please do look into Jesus if you haven't already signed up, as it were. Um, not much in the way of T-shirts or newsletters, but you get salvation thrown in. So uh, God bless you all and thanks for listening. Bye bye. Oh, by the way, sorry. Please also, if you're financially able, join SoCo Films. It's like $2.99, not even the price of a cup of coffee here at Speaker's Corner per month. You get uh, discounts, you get access, um, exclusive access to certain elements of a Discord server, behind the scenes chats. Uh, you can come and have a chat to me um, on Discord. It's, that might be putting you off actually. You can uh, chat to various Speaker's Corner polemicists. Uh, what else? Join us on Parler. We'll be on Parler, uh, P-A-R-L-E-R. -E it's kind of like an alternative to Twitter. So Soko will very soon have their own account on there. And at the moment, I have an account, which is K Soko Films. Please do join me there um, and pray. Please pray as if your lives depended on it, because hopefully um, they never will. And Christian persecution is a real thing. It is near genocidal levels and I sleep easily at night, but I go to bed thinking about it and I wake up with these images in my head and I really feel that the Lord has called me to tell you um, and for you to please pray about it. Our first defense and form of attack is always prayer um, and exert any political influence you have, any social media presence you may have, any, write some letters to your MPs, um, you know, do what you can, um, just get it out there because, you know, ignorance may be bliss, but it's not the truth and the truth is Christ. Lots of love, etc. Bye bye. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Uncle Jamal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.